Hello there, it's that time of the week where we look back over the major happenings in World of Warcraft. Now the Warcraft team seem determined to make sure that we'll still have a steady feed of news while we wait for patch 1026 to bring us a pirate invasion, with a short preview of the Hearthstone's 10th anniversary crossover event in World of Warcraft that will be running between March the 11th and March the 18th. There have been a couple of crossovers in the past which rewarded the awesome Hearthsteed mount which can still be obtained by winning three Hearthstone matches or Sarge's Tale which you get for completing the Hearthstone Mercenaries mode tutorial campaign. Now if you don't have either of those amounts I was able to get them with only a couple of hours of play even though I don't play Hearthstone so I certainly recommend giving Hearthstone a download and having a little go at getting those. Now, during the event, just by logging into Hearthstone, you'll receive the Fiery Hearthsteed amount. This is a red recolor of that original Hearthsteed. As Hearthstone is free to play, this won't cost you anything more than the time it takes you to download and start the game up. This mount's only going to be available until May the 14th, so I certainly recommend that you don't hang about, or you never know, you might just forget to get it before it's too late. We also got some more details about the crossover event that we can expect to see in-game in World of Warcraft. According to Blizzard, we'll be able to seek out special Hearthstone matches in capital cities, and if we stick around long enough, we'll be able to face a special encounter where we can defeat iconic minions to add to our deck and earn other rewards. Now, I've always thought it would be cool if they could integrate Hearthstone into World of Warcraft in the same way that Witcher 3 integrated Gwent into the game, and this would probably be a great opportunity for this to happen. That said, they have put Hearthstone in quotes in their description, which makes me think that's probably not what they plan. I'm thinking that most likely it's going to be a bit closer in vibe to either the Diablo event we saw last year, or maybe the Warcraft Rumble event, or perhaps even a fusion of the two, but I guess we'll find out in a few weeks' time. Now, they didn't share a lot of new info on the rewards, but there have been a bunch of rewards that have been previously data mined that are quite likely to come from this event. This includes a new mount, the Compass Rose, which is a Hearthstone themed dismount, Sarge, which is a battle pet version of Sarge's tail, the Collector's Carrier, which is the second general purpose 36 thought bag, and also a Hearthstone themed toy that will dock a miniature Hearthstone uh, board down, and that, that I think will be quite cool. Moving over to Classic, the big news this week was the launch date for the solo self-found mode in Classic Hardcore, which is going to be February the 29th. Now, if you're not sure what solo self-found is, it's a variant of Hardcore, which disables all gun game mail trading in the auction house. Basically, you just have to make do with the items that drop for you in-game. This was a very popular request for Hardcore, as it does add an extra layer of challenge into the levelling up part of the the hardcore game mode. There is an option where if you don't like it you can disable this mode if it becomes too much but quite understandably there's no way to turn it back on once you put it off other than creating a new character so I think this is definitely something that you'd probably want to treat as having a bit of a lock-in. Now, with no active PTR, there hasn't been much opportunity for the PTR watch section of these news videos that I'll be planning to do once we do get the PTRs up and run again. But there has been an interesting bit of info data mine nevertheless. Now, don't worry, this doesn't relate to any game features or lore, so it's a pretty spoiler-free section in this case. Now, the data mine info suggests that World of Warcraft may be coming to NVIDIA's GeForce Now service. This service basically allows you to run games on NVIDIA servers which then stream the images to you. The main benefit of this is it allows games to be run in more powerful hardware than you own but it does come at the cost of increased computer to screen latency which means that certainly for me that is probably not something I would want to do. Now Obviously WoW isn't a particularly hard game to run hardware wise, but equally it's also not latency sensitive, so this might actually be viable for some people, you know, especially compared to FPS games where that latency thing I think would be a bit of a deal breaker. 
Now what's kind of interesting about this is how it would be done mechanically. Battle nets are walled garden, albeit that wall's been getting a bit porous with Diablo and Overwatch and stream, and also a recent announcement that Diablo is going to be coming to Microsoft Game Pass. Now I've personally been doubtful that WoW would go down this same route, but if they are planning to put WoW in GE Force, I think that one way to do that would be via Steam, which already has a built-in integration with the service. Um, the other potential would be to put Battle.net in stream, which might also be kind of an, an interesting uh, option because that will weaken that kind of walled garden around Battle.net. Now, either way, this I think does make it more likely that WoW could expand to things like Game Pass in the future. And, and obviously that's an interesting thought. Game Pass has a lot of other games on top of WoW and maybe, you know, paying maybe, I don't know, £15 a month instead of £10 a month for WoW if it came with a lot of other games games might be quite an attractive option. Now this hasn't been mentioned in Microsoft's big update this week which I would have expected if this was coming soon so it may just be you know a data mined out of context thing or, or an abandoned idea but you know what do you think? Will we see WoW in Steam? Would you want to see it in Steam? Would you continue to use Battle.net if you could get the games elsewhere? Do let me know in the comments below. Now this week World of Warcraft had a bit of a bug where the WoW token for a brief period could only be handed in for game time and not for the Blizzard balance. This was quickly confirmed as a bug but I did feel it led to an interesting discussion point. Now speaking personally, I've used the token to pay for store mounts a few times as an indirect way to obtain them via gameplay rather than you know just swiping my card and I'd probably miss having that avenue. But when the fir issue first emerged, I saw quite a few folks in the community pointing out that because the token can be used to play for non-WOW products in the store, it does actually open up an indirect way to turn gold into RMT. Now, any time this exists, it's inevitably going to create incentives for things like bot and in-game, and it does make me wonder if this particular option is at least a case where the harm might outweigh the benefits. Now, to be clear, I don't think the token could be taken away entirely, as that definitely, I think, would increase illicit RMT, which also creates similar and sometimes even worse incentives, but maybe a world where the token could only be used for game time might be a slightly better better world for the game. That said, you know, during the time the bug was active, I didn't see much impact in token prices, albeit it was such a short period that maybe it didn't have time to, you know, flow through into the prices, or maybe it's just this option isn't used a lot, who knows. Anyways, what do you all think? Would it be good for the game if Blizzard did remove the ability to turn it into Blizzard Balance? Or, or would you prefer the token not to exist? Do, do let me know in the comments. I'd be really interested to get some other perspectives on this. Also this week, PC Gamer reported that World of Warcraft's narrative director Steve Denusa has left Blizzard back in November. Steve worked in World of Warcraft since 2015, moving first into the lead role in 2019 and then on to the director role in 2022. In an interview with PC Gamer, Steve revealed that he decided to move on partly due to the return to office policy for Blizzard, but also out of the desire to find a new challenge. Now, whatever the impact Steve had on the game story, I I do wish him well in his future endeavours. With Chris Metzen back in a creative leadership role, I think it's fair to say that we're likely to be moving into a new era for the game's story. Now last up this week, this isn't really news, but the quest line to get the Spirit of Echero mount, which is only available for two weeks out of every six months, will be ending with this week's reset. I was able to get the mount in about 2.5 hours, it basically does require a bit of archaeology, but you can actually do the mount even if you haven't leveled archaeology up, so it is super accessible. You still just have time to snag it if you're quick. Uh, if it's not something you're familiar with, I'm going to put a link to a video guide in the comments below so that you can jump straight onto it. Well that's all for the news this week. With no PTR for patch 1026, it's fair to say that things are a little bit quiet in the use front at the moment and I honestly expect that to continue until the patch releases. But once it does, with the Season 4 PTR and most likely the War Within Alpha following quickly behind, I suspect it won't be all that long until we have a ton more to share. 
We're starting to edge into the kind of time frame where we'll get a release date for 1026 and Dragonflight. Blizzard have been giving us a bit more notice, sometimes but not always, up to four weeks in advance. So that's something to keep an eye on, especially the week in WoW posts that the community team put up on a Monday. Anyway, if you'd like to be notified as soon as I put videos out, do please hit the subscriber button and the bell icon below. There'll be lots more videos coming in the near future. And if you've enjoyed this video, do please hit the like icon below to let both me and YouTube know. Subscribing and liking gives YouTube a powerful signal that it's worth promoting this video more widely, which is a massive help for channels like mine. But that's all for now, folks. I will see you all soon.